everyone, I'm Lauren and welcome to another video from the Tiny Menagerie. 80 litre or 20 gallon tanks are an ideal size for anyone looking to keep small to medium sized aquarium fish that don't need a huge amount of space, which is the vast majority of common aquarium species that you see in a typical shop. And with so many fish on offer, it's really easy to feel a bit overwhelmed by choice. And so here is my thoughts on five perfect fish for an 80 litre setup and who are also perfectly happy to live together in the same setup. And the first fish on my list is one that I could happily chat about all day and that you will certainly find in a typical fish shop, the lovely and wonderfully common white cloud minnow. These are by far the most well-known fish on this list, partly because of their ability to live in both temperate and tropical waters, and also the fact that they are readily available at very reasonable prices. But just because they're small and cheap doesn't mean these fish are ideal for nano tanks, which shops especially tend to push them as. While white clouds have a very mild temperament and they're incredibly hardy so they can survive in a small tank, that doesn't necessarily mean that they should, and you just have to look at their superbly streamlined shaped body to see that they are swimmers, they like their space. They can tolerate confinement for short periods of time, such as when they're in a breeding tank or in the shops for example, but they fare much better when they can stretch their fins a little bit. In very cramped situations they can even have a bit of a temper and they will chase at each other, or they can go the complete opposite way and simply stay very still and seem quite depressed in themselves. Much better then to give them the space that they need, and an 80 litre tank is an ideal starting point. And if you are very new to keeping fish, then white clouds could be perfect for you as well, as they are, as I said, a supremely hardy species, and they will forgive a mistake or two with water conditions, so long as you correct it reasonably quickly. And so long as you also keep them in a group with no less than six individuals, then they will reward your care with their antics. White clouds are brave explorers, always out in the open, they'll stay for the most part in the middle zone of the water, so they tend to avoid the surface and the substrate but they will be forever swimming in and out of plants, interacting with each other, and generally being very entertaining to watch. I think sometimes we fish keepers can be a bit snobbish, and we will disregard cheaper common fish because they are just that, but usually there is a very good reason why these fish became so popular in the first place, and more often than not, it is because they are simply a joy to keep. And that's very much the same case for the next fish on my list, which is the five-banded barb. This is a fish who sadly lives very much in the shadow of its similar looking, though temperamentally very different cousin, the tiger barb. Both are barbs, both only grow to about 1.5 to 2 inches in length, both should be crept in groups of at least 6 individuals, and both have vertical stripes running down their body, but that is where the similarity ends, and five banded barbs are eminently more suitable for keeping in a medium sized aquarium compared to tigers. And this is because, while they certainly have a rather menacing edge to their appearance, overall they are just a much calmer fish. In fact, they tend towards being a little bit on the shy side, especially when you first get them, and they really benefit from having a few dither fish around, such as neons for example, just to show them that there's nothing to be scared of. And after a week or so of settling in, you should find that your five bands start spending much more time out and about in the open looking for food. And five bands are fiendishly greedy. All barbs are greedy and eager feeders, but five bands really seem to relish their micro pellets. During the day, they will stick for the most part in the lower third of the tank. They seem to particularly enjoy decorations that allow them to hide a little bit, a few caves here and there, or some really dense leafy foliage. A word of warning though, while I would certainly describe adult five bands as being calm, I would be very, very wary about keeping young five bands in with any species that has flowing fins, as baby five bands are some of the worst fin nippers I have ever come across. They grow out of it, and once they're getting towards being adults around four to five months of age, they calm right down and spend most of their time looking for food, or harmlessly chasing each other around. But they are tiny terrors when they are young, and everyone else in the tank is just going to have to put up with them while they grow up. This is fine for fast moving fish who can get out of the way or learn to keep an eye out for the babies when they're getting close, minnows for example, anything that's got a bit of speed to it, but slower moving fish like guppies for example would be in for a very hard time indeed. But adult five bands are lovely, they are eager without being frantic, curious without being dangerous and an ideal species for the community tank. Just be wary of them when they're small. And they certainly go very well with another of my favourite barbs, the lovely cherry barb. These are actually a little bit larger than your average five band, and a big female is going to grow to be about two inches from nose to tail tip. But 
wild cherries are a little bit larger, they are certainly not the most active of fish. Cherry barbs are sedate, to put it mildly. They like a much slower pace of life and tend to spend a lot of their time lurking around in the undergrowth rather than charging about the place like your average barb does. But just because they lurk doesn't mean they are shy, and cherries will quickly learn to recognise you as their owner and provider of food. And they will soon learn to come racing to the front of the glass when they see you in order to beg, which is obviously a very pleasing thing and puts you much in the mind of small red and gold dogs rather than fish. And the fact that cherries show such a strong sexual dimorphism as well, with the males exhibiting this strong red coloration and the females having an equally beautiful golden yellow striped pattern, is another factor very much in their favour for a smaller tank. They look so different that to the untrained eye they could very easily be completely different species, increasing their value even higher when you might be somewhat limited in the number of species you can keep in a smaller tank. With cherry barbs, you get a two for one deal. And they are also perfectly peaceful, I have never seen them show any aggression towards each other or any other fish, and unlike five bands they don't go through an annoying nippy phase neither. With them being very peaceful though, you will obviously need to keep an eye on them, just to make sure that they're getting plenty of food if you're keeping them in with very eager species, but for the most part cherries are perfectly capable of looking after themselves. But perhaps you're not looking for a fish that's as active as a barb and would like your tank to be considerably more relaxed, in which case you might do well to look at something like a red phantom tetra. These rather handsome, chunky little fish have what I like to think of as the tetra attitude, which is basically, I'm not moving unless it's worth my while. While some fish are always on the go, danios and barbs always seem to have somewhere else that they need to be. Tetras though, they don't care. They will get where they're going in their own sweet time. And phantoms are no different. They are a very relaxed fish, often quite content to just hover in one spot in the tank for a few minutes or so at a time, seemingly just watching the world go by. Not that this makes them any less appealing. If you're building an aquascape, for example, and you really don't want a fish that zooms around all the time and distracts from all your careful aquascaping work, then phantoms are ideal. One thing to bear in mind with them, though, is that phantoms do seem to prefer a darker substrate, as they will try to lighten their bodies to match their surroundings, as many fish do. On a pale substrate, this can make them look almost transparent, while on a darker background, they tend to have a much deeper shade of red to them. They do have a black version as well, which is perhaps slightly more frequently seen than the red, though black phantom tetras do get slightly larger at around 2 inches, whereas I found the red phantoms stay closer to 1.5 inches in length. And while they don't really school together, you will want to keep a small group of at least 4 individuals, as they seem to be much braver when they can see others of their own kind in the vicinity. And of course, every tank needs somebody to do the cleaning, and Cory's fit that job description perfectly with their constant snuffling around in the substrate on the hunt for leftover food. But not all Cory's are the same, and some do get considerably larger than others. Panda Cory's though stay nice and small, and even the largest of females is only going to reach about 1.5 inches in length. This is ideal for an 80 litre tank, as all quarries need to be kept in a group of at least 6 individuals, and because of this they really appreciate that extra space that they get from an 80 litre tank. Panda quarries are hugely popular in the hobby thanks to their charismatic looks and hardiness, and because of this they are often seen in shops at a very young age, basically as soon as they are recognisable as a panda quarry they will be up for sale. If you do buy them as tiny babies, then you might find that they vanish as soon as you put them into a tank as large as 80 litres, especially if you have lots of debris on the substrate. Sticks, leaves, twigs, anything like that, because baby pandas will often take shelter underneath these in order to hide from predators. Adult pandas are much more confident though, and they will often happily sit out in the open, right up against the glass, almost like they're watching you through it in a strange reversal of roles. Like all quarries, pandas are completely harmless to other species, they have no interest at all in chasing other fish or nipping at their fins, and as they themselves have rather robust ribbed fins, they tend not to be targeted by other nippy fish species. Like all bottom dwellers though, you just need to make sure that you're feeding your tank enough to make sure that food is actually falling right down to the bottom where the pandas can get at it, because they won't feed from the water column itself at all. An 80 litre tank is a great size for both beginners and experienced aquarists alike. It gives you enough space to keep a few different species without breaking the bank, nor does it need a huge amount of space in order to house it. And there are many hundreds of fish that are suitable for keeping in a medium sized tank like this. 
Anywho though, I hope you've enjoyed this little video all about some of my favourite species to keep in an 80 litre tank. Happy fish keeping everyone, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye!